it's showtime for Rugby League's great entertainer. As the trophies go up for grabs on finals day of the 1995 Coca-Cola World Sevens. This is going to be one of the most fantastic tries. The survivors from two days of sizzling action hit Sydney Town, chasing the cup and the cash in non-stop sudden death action. Have the Winfield Cup speed machines got the flair and fitness to claim the prize? All were one of 95's overseas sensations eclipse the Aussie stars. Oh, have a look at that. That's the best of the tournament. Take a deep breath and get ready to scorch the turf as we turn up the tempo on finals day at the Coca-Cola World Sevens. Right here on the one and only Wide World of Sports. Finals day here at the Sydney Football Stadium in this year's Coca-Cola World Sevens Rugby League competition. We kicked off on Friday night at Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane. Yesterday, a full day's play here at league headquarters. And today, all the matchups in the finals have been scheduled. Our focus, of course, on the top competition, that's the Cup Comp. These are the eight sides who've moved through from their respective groups. Manly up against St George, Newcastle versus Brisbane. New Zealand up against Fiji and the Gold Coast to take on Western Samoa. And Paul Vorton looking through those quarter finalists. No real surprises. No, Pete. You can see the top division is far stronger than the bottom there with the four Winfield Cup sides. Uh, down in the bottom of the division, New Zealand have played some great football. They had two great victories on Friday night. Uh, in the top division, Manly look good. Clippy Lions is having a blinder of a, a season in the seven. St George have got some species. Newcastle, I think they've been the most impressive, Pete. The Johns boys have run right. And Brisbane also played a right uh, on Friday night, although they lost one match against Western Suburbs, but uh, with O'Neill and Khan in their team, they'll be hard to beat as well. Out of those two divisions, I'm, gonna, I'm tipping a Newcastle versus New Zealand final. Yes, what about from the divisions, one plays two, three plays four, the winners of those games. That's exactly right. I'm actually going to, I think Newcastle, the dark horse, I asked you about the sides to watch yesterday. Let's get more specific. What about the individual players who could be influential in taking the title? Well, I think Newcastle, we talk about them, you've got the Johns boys. They've played some great football. They've scored a lot of points, especially Matthew Johns. Uh, Jamie Ainsco is in good form for St George. Uh, Goldthorpe's been playing well and Gordon Tallis has showed some great early season form. For Manly, Cliffy Lyons just been going sensational. We're about to see Cliff Lyons in action. The highlights now of those first two games, Leslie Tapsell has put together these. First up, a replay of last year's final, the Sea Eagles up against the Dragons. It was a replay of last year's final, but this time only one of Manly and St George would advance past the quarters. Saints had the early possession, but it was the Sea Eagles who made the inroads. Bull Ridge, now to Hancock with a step off the left. Back to Matthew Ridge, Hopawate on the left flank. Kenny outpaced Mundine. He has over the first 20. Mundine comes again and wraps him up just inside the Dragons' half. And Hopawate did very well to stay away from the sideline. Hancock now comes 15 metres in and there's a good line to the right for the Sea Eagles. Big line on the right. Ridge calling for it. They cover 15 metres with a first pass. They keep it going through Hasler. St George shuffling across the field. It comes back through Ridge and good defence. Wrestled to the ground. Manhandled by Jeff Hardy. Tuvi. This is Hasler. And again the Dragons equal to the task in defence. 30 metres out from the St George line. Manly continue to attack. Tuvi on to Ridge. Now Menzies. Menzies looking for open space, turns Hill inside, Ridge now, 20 metres out, Tuvi overruns the ball, Hill cleans up, and Manley still 30 out from the line, this time it's Hasler, Hopawate again, this time Hardy is the man he has to get past, Hopawate tries to stand him up and he is rolled into touch. More than four minutes had passed before Manly registered first points. First half, we're not far out from half time now, nil all on the scoreboard which is amazing but just shows the quality of defence. Here's Hasler trying to find open spaces. St George has slid well again. They're on the rack this time as Denny Moore puts on the pace. He gets away from Tallis. Moore will run 40 metres to score and the big dive to finish it off. Manly four, the Dragons nil. With both sides feeling the heat, early Inside second half Hopalata, points were vital. Up 6-0 at the break, Manly struck the decisive blow. Manly with a chance. The ball comes back inside. Menzies has the tie for Manly. And that could well be a match-winning lead. Ten points to nil. The Seagulls lead St George. Down to just eight fit players, the Dragons could have done with a new recruit. Their crisis deepened when Gordon Tallis' ankle took the brunt of a two-man tackle. Really twisted right back, Gordon Tallis. Oh, yes. Hanging on his face. And the momentum going all the wrong way for Gordon Tallis there. 
see the, the right leg caught underneath there. And that could be a real problem. Tallis to his feet to some degree, being helped off by the St George trainers, but no doubt we won't see Tallis back in this game. Behind 12-0, Saints needed a try to stay in the match. It came through Graham Bradley. Away to coin. Inside the ball came. He's got a big family, the Hardys. <laughs> well, that's what he reckons. He told me. As it comes back inside. Now it's Bradley. Look at the Penguin. Straight for the line. Toovey's away from Jeff Toovey. Graham Bradley gets the Dragons' first try. 10, or rather 12 points to four. With two minutes to go, Manly handed the Saints one last chance to equalise. The play back to Hill. There's the intercept. The Dragons now. Less than two minutes remaining. Goldthorpe coming up with a pill. That is plenty of time, under two minutes. So they've got a good set of six here. They've got four left. They're looking tired, St George. That's their big problem, as long, along with the fact they've got 82 metres to go. I think that's Jeff Orford. Yes, Orford back out on the field for the Dragons. So that might have been basically out of necessity that they're down in numbers. Dummy half was Bartram. This is Hardy along the line to Mundine. Looking to throw the cutout ball. Goldthorpe got into the action. Walford. He then gets the pass away. The Dragons in possession, it's Coyne. Mark Coyne coming back in field, 35 out from the Manly line. Mundine, there's a chance on the right if they can get the passes together. Hardy, he called Bartram inside. Jeff Hardy, inside pass. Their price balloons yet again. And Manly come up with it. It was to be the Saints' final fling. Manly advancing to the semis with a 12 to six win. Manly through to the semi-finals of the cup and they will continue to defend their title one in 1994. The combination of Matthew and Andrew Johns held the key to Newcastle's chance against the Broncos. The Knights immediately had Brisbane on the back foot. And now it's with Andrew Johns and he's around the outside of them, he won't have the pace. He's up at the 20 metre line, he got away from one almost. An ankle tapping dive brings him down. Julian O'Neill it was. And the penalty goes to Newcastle, so they get six tackles inside the 10-metre line. And Andrew Johns will undoubtedly combine with his brother to set it all up here. Robbie O'Davis has come into first receiver, but the Broncos get themselves offside. Another penalty. So six more tackles. As Andrew Johns cuts out O'Davis, goes to his brother Matthew. He puts a grubbing kick across. They must score with the bounce. They do it properly. They do it professionally. And Mark Glanville... Out on the left wing is able to score. Well, how much can we wrap these Johns brothers? That was just sensational play by Matthew Johns. He saw that out wide they were covered. And that's a sensational kick. And they nearly messed it up in the end, but Glanville read the bounce well and got over for the first try. But the Broncos levelled almost immediately through utility the John Platt. Works for Johnny Platt. He'll get it down in the corner. He'll improve on that. But two minutes later, the combination of Johns and Glanville again bamboozled Brisbane. For Ainsco. Ainsco is big and strong, able to unload. And back from Tracy, it's come through two sets of hands. Now for Matthew Johns to loft it out for Robbie O'Davis to try and stand up. Wendell Saylor ran back into the floating arm there of Johnny Plath. And now Matthew Johns lofts it over the top. Oh, what a beautiful piece of work. What a magic piece of work this has been for Glanville to get his second try. As is the nature of sevens, the lead was a hot potato. Brisbane made it 10-8 in its favour when Sailor and Khan combined. Somebody to come off him, but now Sailor is with the ball and the, this big winger, this kangaroo winger, is able to get it away when it's gone out through Madison to Willie Khan, and Khan gets it over the line. But Newcastle had the final say of the half. Matthew Johns scoring his fifth try of the tournament. It was the Knights up 14-10 at the break. Matthew Johns is over. The second half started with a bus from the Broncos. Up towards the 40 metre line and beyond. Madison with a fend and then the back up and the support. And the Broncos through their captain Chris Johns take it down to the 30 metre line. The pass was forward though. Yeah, bad luck to the Broncos. But Newcastle increased the buffer to 10 points when Andrew Johns slipped through. Andrew Johns gets the try. That final pass. Down 20 to 14, Brisbane had to keep the Knights trialless. The luck was with Newcastle. Now it's back for Herman to take it away from dummy half. The ball comes loose. And this is a chance. In fact, I think it's a try. Referee's on the spot. It's a try, all right. Willie Khan left on the ground. Thinking about it. He went in. He's come up with, uh, with thin air. 
and Tony Herman gets the try. He's a freak, Tony Herman. From there, the Broncos needed a minor miracle. Skipper Chris Johns did his part. For us as Ainsco battles, and he's going to lose the battle. Chris Johns gets the try. Julian O'Neill's conversion, making it 24 to 20. What a great kick! And it is, it is a great kick. But the Knights ran down the clock, moving into the semis for the first time since 1992. So Manly and Newcastle, the first two sides through to the semi-finals in this year's World Sevens. Manly hard fought winners over an injury plague St George, 12 points to six. On Newcastle in the high scoring affair, have outed the Brisbane Broncos, 24 points to 20. There are two spots remaining in the semis. We'll take a break now and be back with more quarterfinal football. Finals day in the Coca-Cola World Sevens. Very warm conditions and that may well suit our four remaining quarter finalists. First up, Fiji take on New Zealand and then the Gold Coast will be looking to overcome Western Samoa. Let's have a look at the highlights now of both matches with Ian Maurice. There's no doubt the Fijians were the crowd's favourite. The fans expected the unexpected and they weren't disappointed. This time inside from Koravada, Kubawai and Vol, Seru. Away to Kudrokia, on to Kubawai, P.O. He's going to P.O. to the corner, Kubawai! Long arm stretches out, four points to the Fijian. Oh, they're magic to watch, aren't they? Keep the ball alive, the ball does all the work, apart from the man putting them himself in a position to support. And this try must have gone through 10, 11 sets of hands. Great stuff. Keep changing the direction of play, that puts a lot of pressure on the defence. The defender there for New Zealand, Peter Edwards, was turned inside out. Came up with a nice tackle at the end, but Kubaway had the reach. There was no conversion. Fiji 4, New Zealand nothing. But the Kiwis hit back straight away. We really tackle. We're again. Come on, Vinny. It goes across to Leicester. Leicester will get four points. Aaron Leicester for the New Zealand side. The Kiwis failed to convert, and the game was tied at four points each, but the Fijians were proving very hard to hold. The, draw. the Fijians, 20 metres out, big stepping from Toga. Then away, is that Nalangalangi, or in fact it's Seru. Billy Moni Seru helps himself to another four points. Well, there was some big stepping from Ili Tonga, but there's some light stepping from Seru to score the try. Dummy half getting out, tracking two defenders. There's the big number 10, trying to wrong foot is opposite. And then the big step from Saru and the number six, Moana, got nowhere near him. Lovely ball that, well controlled, and the big step. And that should be a good lead for Fiji at half time now. Not a particularly easy conversion attempt, but their number seven, Naya Kakalu, has put a beautiful one over to lead 10 4. That was the half time score, and the Fijians wasted no time in extending that lead in the second session. First observation of the Fijians, dark hair and moustaches. And away they go, the Fijians. This is Dakwatonga stretching out. Huge gate on Dakwatonga. And right around underneath the sticks. Four points again for the Fijians, 14 for the score. With the conversion, it was 16 4 to Fiji. But the Kiwis weren't about to lie down. As New Zealand go through the gap, Moana, he'll have too much pace all the way to the corner, Moana. And New Zealand. Back in the match if they can convert, 16 points to 8. Again, the Kiwis failed to convert and would have no more opportunities as Fiji began to turn it on. Gets the ball away to Seru. They keep it passing, they don't look, they just pass and it just happens. Seru, 30 metres out from the line. Dummy to Kubawai, found a support. Now 25 metres out, inside came Big Illy Toga. Illy Toga, they can't stop him. Toga, over. 22 to 8 and Fiji was staring at a semi-final berth but they weren't done with their scoring no hurry here but hurry once they want to stretch out Naya Kakalu over the 30 and yet Noah he's thinking about a big jump to finish no regulation put down and Noah's big smile on his face as he got it down as well Naya Kakalu had the easiest of conversions to make the final score 28 to 8 but who would Fiji meet in the semi-final would it be the Gold Coast or Western Samoa. The Samoans served notice they had nothing to fear from the Gold Coast. Lima putting the Samoans on the board. It's very much in favour of the Western Samoan side as the ball is offloaded there by Setafano and they put on a couple of runarounds and then Lima is tackled. 15 out, no markers, away he goes again Lima, puts on the fin, puts in the dive and he puts on four points. Then bounces the ball off one of the Gold Coast players' heads. 
just for good measure. With the simple conversion, it was 6-0 to the Samoans. Easy work there. But the coast struck back straight away through Brendan Hurst. Dunerman in everything and the Gold Coast with a chance here. Yes, indeed. Brendan Hurst gets over. He bumped them off and then dived in. As a Samoan player was treated and being replaced, the coast from deep in their own territory cut loose. Tugger Coleman making the play for Andrew Hodge. Coleman is out there now for the Gold Coast. He links up with Adrian Brunker and handles a second time in taking it down to the 40 metre line. Steps away from the tackler and then is able to play it forward. There's a chance on here for the Gold Coast. In fact, uh, they're going to go all the way and put it down to score a try of about 60 metres. A 60 metre try for the Gold Coast. Nice work by Tugger Coleman there. Tugger threatened to me on Friday night. He was going to make a 60 metre break. I don't think that'll happen. But so important in this game to have a marker. There was no marker on that occasion, so that left in fact, seven against six with Western Samoan players on the ground. That's where the advantage was. The coast ahead, eight to six. And with the timekeeper's hand almost on the siren for half time, the Samoans struck back. Put onto the boot by Sulavali. Sulavali might get the ball. He does. Gets the bounce off the uprights and scores. A great try, really, in many ways. The Coast's Darren Anderson needed the medicab after he was injured trying to stop that Samoan try. It didn't look good for Anderson, and it wasn't looking great for the Coast either, as the next Samoan try came out of nothing. Hey, him off, right? Again, Setu Telepai, and now they're away for another four-pointer. Chupola, Chupola scores wide out on the uh, member stand side of the ground. 16 to 8 to Western Samoa as the coast raided the line. Tugger Coleman again directing play. Coleman's short pass then calls for the return pass and now plunging in to pick up the four points is Colin Ward to Craig Coleman. He got involved in this try a couple of times and it's really his try. You've got to give it to Craig Coleman. He might be slow, he might be 35. He might be past his best, but I'll tell you what, he's still good value. He throws a great pass. And he's thrown three or four in this match, which has set the Gold Coast to light. Once again, backing up there. Former South Sydney stalwart. He's doing it all for the coast now. And Colin Ward finishes off nicely. It was a fairly anticlimactic finish to the match as a touch judge ran on to report an incident. Time had beaten the Gold Coast. So had Western Samoa, who are now ready for a South Pacific semi-final showdown with Fiji. Two South Pacific sides moved through to the semi-finals of this year's Coca-Cola World Sevens. Fiji much too good for New Zealand, 28 points to 8. Well, Western Samoa had to struggle a little bit more against the Gold Coast before winning 16 points to 12. And that means that the semi-finals shape up like this. First up, a great match. Last year's winners, Manly, up against a side that have won the Sevens before, Newcastle. While a very aggressive and physical Fiji will take on Western Samoa, who will match them in that department very nicely. We'll take a break now from the Sydney Football Stadium and be back with the first semi-final and Ray Warren, Manly, up against the Newcastle Knights. Stanton leading the charges down the tunnel. As Manly prepare for their semi-final encounter with Newcastle. Defending champions of the Coca-Cola World Sevens. One match away from the right to defend their crowd. Jeff Tuvey, their lead up. And Ridge Hancock, Moore, Hill, Hopawati, Lyons, Cunningham, Hasler and Menzies have helped him get the job done to the semi-finals. two clubs will be just about sick and tired of seeing each other they played trials last night they play in this match today and then they meet next friday at marathon stadium in the two east challenge and this man matthew johns is the equal leading try scorer for the tournament five tries an outstanding series O'Davis, Ainsco, grogan herman tracy his brother andrew glanville mccormick and muir around him and the stage is set for what uh, promises to be the best match of the tournament so far. Manly up against Newcastle. Graham Annesley appropriately gets the job with the whistle. Thunderstorm activity around the stadium. Generating uh, a little bit of concern amongst the uh, spectators. This 
stadium of course not renowned for its wet weather cover Newcastle winner of the national sevens back in 1991 Manly starts it they go for the shallow start it comes off with a mistake by McCormack and already Cunningham has got the ball for Manly down 15 metres out from the Newcastle line. Tuvi, the pass across the hill. There's a try coming, is there? No, they slid across, but Hancock is able to slide inside. But so the try does come. Hancock for Manly in, in almost world record time. 25 seconds. Yeah, it didn't take long, that one. A re very poor mistake there from Newcastle from the kickoff. The turnover of a... <laughs> Turnover of possession, and uh, two tackles later they're in. Terry Hill puts the finger up, signals a try. Hancock uh, had some work to do here, got through a couple. Hill sort of ran foil there for a minute. Well, the air, the uh, the conversion attempt is unsuccessful off the boot of Matthew Ridge. And 4-0 Bobby Fulton's side, Manly over Newcastle. A great start. It's almost like losing your serve in a game of tennis. That really was meant for Newcastle to have the ball for six tackles, but the mistake was bad. Here's Newcastle putting it back together now. Matthew Johns and McCormick makes another mistake. A knock on by him, advantage played, and it's with Terry Hill bustling his way down to the halfway mark. That's approximately where Steve Roach is situated. Yeah, Terry Hill had two blokes on the outside then, but he opted to go in the middle. Uh, it's a bit uh, disappointing that two most impressive sides uh, are playing in only in the semi-final. The talking point in the uh, Newcastle Knights room was to cut down Cliff Lyons' this time. Tuvi is with it now. About 35 metres away from the Newcastle line play in the centre of the ground with Ridge turning it back for Danny Moore. Moore has scored three tries for Manly so far. He the equal getter of tries for Manly. Ridge comes away from the right to work on the left and Menzies has also scored three tries. We'll play the ball just inside the 30 metre line. Cunningham is the dummy half. Ridge, now Tuvi. Outside him is Moore, but now Tuvi shows that he too is fallible. Jeff Tuvi arguing the point with the referee. It won't get him too far. And that was the mistake Newcastle were looking for because Manly had three on two out wide and uh, it was looking like another try for the Eagles but now Newcastle on the attack and they need a try very soon Andrew Johns it is who's trying to make the break there between Tuvi and Danny Moore his run ending on the halfway line and Newcastle go left for the moment to Glanville Glanville standing offering Ainsco accepts then promotes it's gone to Matthew Johns a face ball that lands twice so Davis appeared to knock on and as he sounds the whistle after giving the advantage a chance to apply but he'll put the scrum down about 43 metres away from the Manly line. Malcolm really now based in Newcastle as coach of the Knights. He wouldn't be happy because the three times they've had the ball in Newcastle, they've dropped it within three tackles. You can't do that in sevens football and survive. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm reminded of Malcolm really coaching Newcastle that it was with Manly that Australian audiences saw how great Malcolm really, really was. And Bob Fulton speaks in great great terms about him there's two the offloads and Moore fends away Muir had no answer to defend and look at Moore in he goes for Manley's try eight points to nil the conversion attempt from right in front and Newcastle paid for those mistakes simple run around there Newcastle defence didn't read it on that occasion Matthew Johns came in out of the line and Danny Moore streaks away but things looking good for the Eagles. 8-0 with this kick. 10-0 now with the conversion successful for, uh, for Cliffy Lyons. We're 2.50 seconds. 2 minutes 50 out from the half-time break. And Newcastle on their heels. Herman starts. And this is Tracy. Darren Tracy wearing the number 5 shirt. Herman in the headgear. Away for Andrew Johns. And then back for O'Davis in the centre. Then for Herman. As they uh, continue to work the right of the ground. Now they have to go left, and they're with Andrew Johns. Matthew is there now. He got around Cliffy Lyons. He was taken by Des Hasler, got the ball back, and now it's back with uh, Tracy. And here's Ainsco coming off the left wing to, to, to chime in on the right and score. Well, a 
it's a good piece of work by Ainsco. He was over on the left of the ground getting the sun tan. He's come right across the ground to get involved and score a try. Nice try by Newcastle. The Johns boys again heavily involved. Inside ball here for Matthew back to Andrew. That was a lovely flick out the back. From here it was always on out wide and Ainsco came in and uh, he turned them around inside out, up and down, got the try. So the attempted conversion for Matthew Johns. Leading point scorer, equal leading try scorer, but he's just offline with the drop kick attempt. 10-4, 1.38 on the clock. For Cliff Lyons to slowly restart now. First of the semi-finals, the second between the Fijians and Western Samoa. Kangaroo, Terry Hill plays the ball. Two kangaroos on show for Manly. In fact, uh, they treated the sevens with respect supplied two of their kangaroo tourists to the tournament Menzies and Hill Hancock playing the ball 39 metres out from the Newcastle line play coming across to the left of the ground towards the commentary side the camera side of the ground and his line putting Hill through a half gap a gap that closes as Robbie O'Davis makes a diving tackle and now Hasler gives it back to Hill who stayed alive after playing the ball Cunningham, Hasler, Lyons, they all handle and Lyons then tries to get behind the defence Tracy takes him now Hancock sees an opening he tries to get through it just inside the 20 metre line it closes though tackled by Grogan away to the blind goes Tuvey then Cunningham comes in puts a basketball pass into the chest of Hancock and Craig will play the ball 12 metres out from the line. Cunningham on through Hasler. Lyons is with it. Outside him, Hopawati. They cut him out. They go for Hill, who goes for the corner. And he'll get... Oh, I don't think so. The corner post went. Uh, good defence in the corner there by Newcastle because that would have been a handy lead, 14-4, just before half-time. There's a long ball from Lyons. Terry going for the corner, but once again, Andrew Johns, there. he got the ball down, but it was in touch. The restart from the centre of the 20 metre line. The drop kick restarts. And the siren in the background, John Hopawati takes it. Uh, stacks on the mill. The Newcastle player tackled the wrong manly player. Eventually Hopawati is out of it now. So at half time, 10 points to 4, manly over Newcastle. A great start by the Eagles, the defending champions. A little sip of water for Bobby Fulton. We'll take a break with him and come back in just a moment. Out to the west uh, with some storm clouds out, out further. 10-4 as we welcome you back. Manly over Newcastle in the first cup semi-final. The Coca-Cola World Sevens. And uh, getting close now to the culmination of a great weekend of entertainment to open the Rugby League uh, calendar for 1995. Manly then not offering the same opportunities to Newcastle as uh, the Novocastrians did for them at the start of the match. Hancock away, Ridge on, now it's with Lyons, the cutout ball, out for Tuvi, outside his 20 metre line and the 30 metre line. A little bloke, he gets the legs working, but they just don't pump quick enough for Jeff when these big blokes are chasing him. And now Lyons, a long pass out, Hill did well, catch and pass, one motion, Hancock down the right flank. And McCormick is across to make the tackle. 10-4 Manly, leading by six, two tries to one. Opening seconds, opening exchanges of the second half. The winner going through to the final. Big money there too. $100,000 purse. It's across with Menzies after five Manly players in a back line at handle. Menzies brought down 20 metres out from the Newcastle line. Manly brewing up for another try here. Ridges passes a horror. Bounces three, four. Fatty would tell you a hundred times. Lyons is with it now. Up to the 20, tries to draw them, does that Hancock. Hancock yeah. capitalises on the work. And Lyons puts his hand in the air, says, get me out of here. Hancock puts it down. And Manly 14-4. to four. Oh, They're doing it easy at the moment. Wait till they start trying. They're going so well. Even from a, an ordinary pass like this from Matthew Rich. Cliffy Lyons, he's too good for him when he's got so much space. Holds the ball out. Gets into the gap. Ainsco just went nowhere. McCormack couldn't put it with him. And Hancock. So this is Cliff Lyons. And he's way towards the corner and looking for the infield pass, which Hancock, very good winger this man. He's probably one of the most underestimated wingers in the game of rugby league, Craig Hancock. Seemingly been around for a long time on a manly wing and holding out some fairly proficient footballers in doing so. The try was converted. 16-4 to 4 is our scoreboard in favour of Manly. Second half. 
Five minutes to go. Comes across now for the Newcastle player to be thumped out of it by Hill. It was almost a submission by Matthew Johns. He was trying to get the ball away and fend off Matt, uh, uh, Terry Hill at the same time. But Hill is big and aggressive. And this is Jeff Tuvey now. At seven metres short of the halfway, Manley really cruising. I didn't imagine when this started that it would be so easy for Manley. Totally dominant. Cunningham plays it. No marker. Newcastle falling off their work completely. Cunningham stands, pops it back. Hasler sees a gap, sprints through it. And Hasler, he picks up another try for Manley. The Nova Castrians getting an absolute whacking here. The Nova Castrians are hundreds now. Desi Hasler, he's come back from hole. He's not as fast as he used to be. He's not as quick as he was 10 years ago, but he's still too quick for Brett Grogan. Especially with 10 metres head start. $100,000 to the winners as Matthew Rich raises the flag again. $50,000 to the runners-up. And semi-final losers get $20,000. So Newcastle are going to be $20,000 better off for uh, their, their weekend of entertainment. I've got to say that about them. They've been most entertaining. Matthew Johns with that play of his again. And then it all backfires on him. Menzies gets a pass infield. Lyons knows he hasn't got enough pace. He throws the long ball out looking for Danny Moore who gets it on the bounce, gets a favourable bounce and Ainsco pounces on him. And Ainsco throws him over the sideline like he's dragging another sheep in to be shorn. Yes, Newcastle, they really, they've saved their worst performance for this semi-final. they turned over the ball so many occasions. Ainsco did well on that time to put Moore into touch well and truly. So this scrum comes away for Newcastle as we go down and take a comment from Steve Roach. Yes, well, Manly, although leading very easily now, 22 points to four, doing exactly what Rob Fulton told them at half-time. He told them not to close up shop, go for the points. Steve Roach, you'll be interested to know there's a bloke in the box brought, um, kicking for Newcastle very strongly. He said, could you cross the blocker? He was hoping they'd make a break as we crossed, <laughs> which is normal which is normal when we do that. It nearly came, but the knock-on came at the same time. Scrum going down, 30 metres out from the Newcastle line. 22 to 4. This game wasn't made for big blokes like yourself, Stephen. I don't think I'd be too good at this game, mate. I'd, I'd rather 13. You can line blokes up when there's 13 on the field. You know that, Rav? <laughs> exactly. The corridor, I couldn't get them here. <laughs> the corridors aren't as big to guard, are they? Here we have Stephen Menzies now, the, the modern day forward, I suppose you might say, and he's about to play at 28 metres out from the Newcastle line. John uh, Hopawati gets inside the 20. He's big and he's very, very strong. As they go away to a pretty wide blindside now, and it's uh, with Ridge turned back in for Lyons, pushed on for Cunningham. Cunningham confronted by the opposition, lofts a pass out, Hancock is with it, Hancock steps inside Ainsco, brushes away from O'Davis, not once but twice, and Hancock gets another try, what's that, his second or third for the match? Certainly his second. Well, what a good winger he is, Craig Hancock. He's underrated, but not by his opposites, only by the people in the press. He's a very, very good winger. In the tradition of great Hancocks, Michael, now there's Craig. And Robbie O'Davis has had a couple of snatches at him and missed him both times. And then Ridge rubs a bit of salt into the injury because he pilots that drop kick straight between the posts. 28 to 4. Newcastle. Unfortunately humiliated on the scoreboard but I repeat they have been very good in the tournament McCormick doing a bit of light stepping out there Hasler, I thought Des had uh, taken the bait but he didn't, he chased and made the tackle, Glanville runs and points to one of his teammates to go for the gap, he goes for it himself and the ball comes out but it's been stolen penalty Newcastle there's only 29 seconds left on the clock as Newcastle strive for the try, Matthew Johns gets it Matthew John scores the try, taking him to six for the tournament. He got the try, but he looks a bit disappointed, probably with their performance in this semi-final. You know, had they have gone through to the final, I would have named him as the player of the series. He still may win that award, but more than likely you might see one of the players from the actual final who will get that. 
and the siren in the background 28 points to eight with the kick at goal unsuccessful that is the final score so manly go on now with the chance to defend their title with a 28 to 8 victory over newcastle we'll take a break and we're coming back then with the second semi-final between fiji and western samoa um, the the entertainers of the world sevens the coca-cola world sevens they are the team that i think most people enjoy watching i'm talking about the fijians there to the semi-finals their team represented uh, by kubawai wainadroa marayawa dakwatonga koravata kadroika naya kakalu Nalangi Langi, Saru and Tonga. This is the furthest they've come in the sevens. They've uh, made finals and won finals of the trophy and the plate, but they've never had the chance of getting to the big time in the Coca-Cola World Seven. Their opposition, and I guess their arch rivals, Southern Pacific nation, Western Samoa. The captain is Lalani Coco. He'll be playing in the the Winfield Cup in 95 with the, the Sydney Roosters. Sulavali, Lima, Chalapa, Lalaveo, Chipola, Maya, Senefano, Poaching, and Tumavavi. Crowd is good, basking though in beach-like conditions uh, for the major part of the day, apart from some thunderstorms that have been going around Sydney. Bill Harrigan has got the whistle. This should be marvellous encounter. Peter Sterling joins us in the commentary box. Gary Belch is on the sidelines. So we'll do our best. To not prostitute the names too much for you as Western Samoa starts the second semi-final. The ball lands in no man's territory. Really, I can't believe there were so few players around. One of the Fijians is already injured. And Western Samoa with a great chance from the start. Sula Vali is only about seven metres out from the line. Peter Lima is the acting half. They push it around through three and four sets of hands away for Lalani Coco and the captain's in. Also easy, but of course Fiji were down to six men and there is some concern about the injured player. The worst possible start for Fiji, not cleaning up that ball. Somehow Western Samoa found open spaces with the kickoff. It was a mad scramble. The Samoans came up with the ball. Coco spinning out of a tackle here. It's all too easy. Seven on six. And Coco able to come inside one tackle. Spun out. Used the momentum of the tackle to propel him towards the try line. And the Fijian player who was hurt from the kickoff now leaves the field. They are back to their full complement. And the conversion attempt is a good one. Yeah, the conversion from Aliki Maya. So Western Samoa... You might say getting a six-point start because from their kickoff, Fiji were expected to have the use of the football. And now Western Samoa leads 6-0. For the Fijians, they'll be keen to retaliate and retaliate quickly. Koravata using Saru, the ball doing the work as it goes back across to Kubawai. And now it's along the line to Wainadroa. Back across as they look for the, the gap. They're trying to outnumber their opposition. They're trying to outfox them. Both these sides, both these nations, they play the game beautifully. Nakakakalu, one of the leading try scorers in the tournament, getting involved. Over now for Koravata. He holds it back, looks to turn it on the inside. The Western Samoan defence comes across. Equal to the task. Well, that's tremendous sevens play from both teams. Fiji keeping the ball alive. Western Samoa outstanding in defence. Break made here this time by Saru. He'll go all the way. So they've opened up after a very good passage of defence. And Saru, one of the better sevens players in this Fijian side. And there's plenty of good ones. Scores under the posts. And he did it all himself. With a long pass from dummy half. They didn't move up Western Samoa. In fact, the man who did come up came up much too quickly. He realised that there was danger because there was a staggered line. By the time he'd reacted, it was too late. The conversion is successful off the boot of uh, one of the leading point scorers in the tournament, Naya Kakalu. And in fact, that brings up his 40th point for the series. So he actually joins Matthew Johns on that, uh, on that figure. 
As leading point scorer, Gary Belcher with the scoreline now, level at six points all. Yes, and that uh, Fijian that was hurt from the earlier kickoff was Nalangi Lungi. He, uh, he got a bit of a head knock. He's still in the Lungi Lungi land, actually. I see. Thank you, Gary. As the ball goes to ground, I'll tell you what, they're playing this game rather nervously, both sides. Uh, they're making uncustomary mistakes. As Sulavali is able to get out of the tackle, and the ball goes away to um, Chulapa. And a penalty has been given to Fiji. Yes, a voluntary tackle there from Peter Lima. And the referee came up with the right decision on that occasion. A, some sloppy play from both teams, handing the ball over on first tackle. And here's... Well, I don't know what the knees gave way, but... He ended up on the ground without a player putting a hand on him. So the penalty, tap taken by Kadreka. And... Uh, Kayo Kubawai comes in, takes the tackle. They're on the halfway line. Oftentimes they don't look like they're, they know what they're doing either of these sides, but believe me, they do. That long bullet-like pass, very hard to take. But Maya Kakalu, who has signed with Penrith, did well to grab it out of the air. And now they come back across, and Kudroika it is, crossing the halfway line. Well, the support player of Fiji again is very good as the... Samoans left on the ground. Good break made up the middle now, and they've got numbers to the left. Wayne Adroa steps off the left foot, straightens it up, and scores. Second try of the game for the Fijians to lead 10 6, and they've given the goal kicker a great chance again. Well, in the seventh game, if you have one man who drops off his assignment, you're in all sorts of trouble. That man for the Western Samoans was the marker. He stayed on the ground, and all of a sudden, there's got to be some space somewhere. This time, Samoans ridden two mice here as to who was going to get the football. And in the end, Wayne Adroa, no need to throw the ball. See Kodroka going across, looking to link up with his players. Found the number two. There was a number on the far side. The Western Samoans in defence, they've looked at each other and come up with no tackle. So the uh, conversion attempt successful as we come back direct. The Western Samoans from the kickoff. A long break for them. They're only 15 metres out from the line. Can they come back and level the situation up? And this is uh, Stefano. And uh, it's another try for the Western Samoans. Yeah, Sulavali nearly dropped the football there. There's a good break made from the restart of play. You'll see here two Fijians forced to go in and make the tackle. Sulavale had it down on the hip. Like the gunslinger. He scored out wide, and that was good for Fiji. The fact that the conversion attempt is going to be a difficult one. They may well lead by two at the break, and they still have will we'll still have time to have another shot before the break. To Mavavi's attempted conversion wide, so 12 points to 10, Fiji over Western Samoa, and really the difference has been the fact that uh, the Fijians have put it down over the line under the bar twice. And here they are again, the Fijians, and off the mark, very quick, Saru. This is his second try, Philomoni Saru. And he just absolutely left them grabbing at thin air. 16 to 10 with half time only 40 seconds away. This Lalavaro missed tackle here, the number five. One on one. Very easy miss that one. And again in the sevens. If you can't come up with your man one on one, it'll be a try. Fijians mentioned earlier one of their big attractions is that they can score long-range tries but the conversion attempt unsuccessful I wonder whether that will play a part later in the game 16 to 10 a matter of seconds remaining in the, in the first half and the referee Bill Harrigan waiting for the Fijian goal kicker to get back on side as uh, Western Samoa try to use up this final 10 seconds uh, to their advantage and they try the kick over the top the Fijians haven't dropped anybody back on the last. This will be the last play of the first half. No, it's a wasted one. So at half time, three tries to two. Fiji leading Western Samoa, 16 points to 10. We'll take a break and be back with the second half in just a moment. Back to the Sydney Football Stadium. Coca-Cola World 7, second half of the second semi-final. Manly are already there into the final, which carries prize money of $150,000. Fiji looking as though they might join them. They're leading 16 points to 10, even though in the opening seconds of the game they lost their captain, Lee Nalalangi Langi. Peter Lima now, as Western Samoa took the opportunity to do something, but everything broke down for them then. 
15 metres out from their own line and not uh, making any progress at all at the moment against a Fijian defensive line that is sliding and, and very intense. Yes, the Western Samoans match Fiji physically, but I don't think they have the guile and the sleight of hand with the football. See here that well, the bus made up the middle, but a bad pass shine at the end of it. Don't have enough pace to continue on with it, so eventually the tackle will be made by the Fijians. And they've held on for five here, and this is an important set of six, the first set of six in the second half. Meyer it is, who'll play the ball. He's, as you can see, built very close to the ground. He's a tough little cookie. And he's been a part of the Western Samoa uh, chances on the last three occasions we've seen him at the sevens. A permanent fixture, you might say. Fiji now, a bit of, bit of space to work in, and they can be very dangerous from even off their own line in this uh, in this situation. Naya Kakalu it was, who brought the ball away from his own line. This is Wayna Drower out to the 20 metre line, they lead 16 to 10, it doesn't matter really to them if they consume a bit of time, throw the ball about, keep it alive Cuba wide, they can soak up as much time as they like, it's Western Samoa that's got the job in front of them Gary Belcher on the sidelines, my friend, did you put your head into the huddles and understand what they were talking about? I, I actually had a word to Graham Lowe Yes. Uh, and he has said his, the problems in defence for the Western Samoans is that they're trying to belt the Fijians. They're come, getting caught up out of the defensive line. Just stay in one line and number off. Whereas oh. the Fijians... I see. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, nearly one short in the defensive line. <laughs> they are. <laughs> he, he mightn't have been listening to Mavave at halftime. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about trying to belt the opposition. Just decapitate them. Yeah. Well, there you go. Graham Lowe was making the point that you can't be too intensive in defence. You can't be dwelling on it too long at this game. You've got to be up and on with the next mission. Well, he didn't miss him. There was a bit of blood around the mouth there, but he's put the, the thumb up saying, I'm OK. He's, in fact, leaving for the blood bin. Go get another player out there. In the meantime, Fiji have taken the kick for line. And the tap is to be taken by... Kadroika and the Fijians leading 16 to 10. This has all soaked up some time. Four minutes left in the match. Winner going through to the final to play Manly. Kadroika across the back. Well, the captain's back. Nalangi Langi. He puts it down in rugby union fashion. Western Samoa come up with it. And now they can't handle. Then the Fijians playing the advantage knock on. And you'll probably find the scrum will have Fiji feed here because he will rule that they did not gain an advantage from the mistake. That could be the most crucial drop ball of this game from Chewy Lapa for Western Samoa. It was a simple changeover. They trailed by six, three and a half minutes to go. They really needed that set of six. Now Fiji have a perfect opportunity to wrap up this ball game. They've got five tackles, 20 metres to travel. Played by Naya Kakalu and running with it is Marewa. And the ball goes across to Kabuwai, and he's tackled a couple of metres out from the line. Well, the, ref the touch judge has ruled that the big man Kubawai has gone into touch. The crowd on that far side don't think so. It's a big body contact. Oh, gee, that's... I know the foot was very close to the line, but I don't know whether it actually touched it. I don't think it did, but uh, the referee has had to act on the touch judge's opinion he has sole control on matters of touch and western samoa get the advantage of what appeared a glaring mistake they're out to the 20 meter line but they've been down here for a long long time they're not doing they're not doing enough work on the other end of the paddock really peter lima is tackled on his own 30 meter line well that was a settler on the third tackle and that's just a waste really chipola now about seven or eight metres short of halfway. Lima is the acting half. And this is uh, Sula Valley. Just into Fijian territory. Now they've used up five tackles. What will they do on this last? Will they use the kick? They shape for the kick. They don't go for it. And across on the far side of the ground, they're going to expire their six tackles. And that's one of the few turnovers we've seen in the sevens. A big rap there for the number two from Fiji, Wayne Drower. He covered three men. They were in a little bit of trouble. They didn't get numbers over on the far side, Fiji. He saw the danger, got across, trailed on the inside, was actually involved in making the tackle, but he'd also cover the two inside men. Wayne Drower talking of him as the player elected to take it out. And the cross now from uh, 
Dakwatonga and then away from the Ili Tonga back through Korovata and they've gone back to the right of the ground the Dakwatonga again is handled and now Korovata he decides to try and make the, the break they just keep it alive and they just probe and hope to work them out of position and then when somebody sees the gap they put the foot on the pedal kick the head by Ili Tonga race back for the ball oh Peter Lima's overrun it Fiji picks it up and then they drop it uh, Bill Harrigan will put a scrum down well Peter Lima he must be breathing a, a heavy sigh of relief because he was humiliated by the bounce here he is here well, again Fiji getting in each other's road there to try and pick the ball up Saru ended up knocking the ball on they've only got 30 seconds left in this game so they'll have about two shots Western Samar that should be a penalty to them unfortunately it will wind down the clock against them and that'll be another penalty Harrigan marches them 10 running out of time Samar they've got to get the ball in play 16 points to 10 is the half time score if memory serves me correctly and uh, I don't think from Friday night right through we've had a score of seven minutes of football and I don't know whether that's because they can both play the sevens game or whether it's been a, a sloppy second half I think it might be the latter here's the uh, Western Samoans with the last throw of the dice Tumavavi gets a pass away but that's gonna oh no he's able to get it away they're desperate now to Lapa across from Lalani Coco it bounces but it went backwards Harrigan says play on the Samoans they're down 16 to 10 and now they're down and out he passes from the ground Bill Harrigan won't, won't apply the penalty he calls an end to it and Fiji has gone to the final their first final of the major series at the Coca-Cola World 7 they've aspired for what they're coming to in the final for three years now and 16 to 10 they've beaten Western Samoa so a jubilant Fijian camp they'll take a break they'll try and freshen up and then we'll come back and see how they go in the final against Manly after this break. One game left to be played here at the Coca-Cola World Sevens at the Sydney Football Stadium. That is, of course, the big one, the cup final. $150,000 up for grabs, $100,000 going to the winner. But we have had a couple of finals already decided. Earlier today, the plate final was contested between the USA and Tonga. And the Tongans, who are very well versed in Sevens Rugby League, were able to defeat USA in this game. This was one of their better tries. Michael Filikatonga going oh, 50 or 60 metres, a pretty extravagant running style, but he had too much pace for a pretty gutsy effort from this USA side. They've been here for a couple of years now. The scissors kick at the end signalled that uh, it was all over and 20 points to four in favour of Tonga over the USA. And the trophy final, which was the next final to be contested, saw two Winfield Cup sides in action. The Sydney Tigers up against the Sydney Bulldogs. An upset this one. The Tigers proving too good. This was what ultimately proved to be the winning try, scored by Wes Patton, one of the real stars of this tournament. And they were pretty happy about it. It's been a lean couple of seasons for the Tigers. They took this one out 20 points to 12. Both teams have been undefeated going into that game. The Tigers finishing off in style. But, of course, that does set us up for the game that most people have been waiting for. A very interesting game. Last year's winners, the Manly Seagulls, have looked very good, confirming their favouritism for this title. But Fiji have been real crowd pleasers and they're going to be a major hurdle for the Manly team. To see who gets the money in 1995, let's now go to Ray Warren for the final of the World Sevens. Thank you, Peter, as Manly takes the field to defend their Coca-Cola World Sevens title. Won it in 94. Jeff Tuvey and his teammates have got the chance now to be the first team ever to win the title back to back. Some class acts around him, including Cliffy Lyons, Stephen Menzies, and Danny Moore. Menzies, of course, fresh back from the Kangaroo Tour. An imposing record in sevens football down through the years. They're the only club that has won it twice. They won it in 90, they won it last year, and they went out as runners-up in 1993 to Eastern Suburbs. Fiji have not enjoyed the same success, although they went out in the Cup semis last year to St George, who went on to ultimately be beaten by Manly. 
but um, if there was a, a popularity barometer here at the Sydney Football Stadium, these guys would certainly win hands down. But Manly are no strangers to that. And they'll handle that situation here as they have down through the years since joining the Winfield Cup back in 1947. The Fijians will perform their war cry. of them will be engaged in Winfield Cup this year. This is where you're not out there, Fatty. That'll frighten you. The crowd love them. And I hope the television audience enjoys this one as Peter Sterling and Paul Horton join me in the box and Steve Roach is on the sidelines. I'd rather be with than against the Fijians. I think in sevens football, especially when you get to the high level, and that's the finals, you look at the best defenders, and you probably do have to favour the Manly Club. During this tournament, they've been outstanding in their scrambling. BG are going to put a lot of pressure on their opposition's defence. They can go the length of the field, but Manly have been very strong. I think it'll be the side that can stop the most points. We'll take this out. The final is 10 minutes by 10 minutes. Danny Moore, one of the high try scorers for Manly in the tournament so far Bill Harrigan has got the whistle for the final of the Coca-Cola World Sevens, it's underway Manly gets first use of the football Tuvi on the end of a floating pass from Ridge, they take it towards the centre, Hill brought down and tackled by the number one for Fiji, Kubawai to play with Cronulla this year from Ridge, it's with Lions now he looks for Menzies to give him the decoy he does that, Hancock who's had a magnificent tournament, comes back away from the sideline. He's rounded up but gets it back for Matthew Ridge and he's on the end of a Kubawai tackle which is helping him gain ground. He got the big Fijian shove as Menzies a dummy half unloads. Tuvi gives it on. Lyons is with it, promotes for Hill. Hill tries to stand up the opposite there, number nine, which is Saru. And Jerry Hill will play the ball. Still a couple of tackles left on this set. Danny Moore looking to step away from the dummy half area but held by Saru Harrigan still without the hand in the air so I guess this must be the second last on this set as Lyons goes across and Menzies can't beat the defence now the hand is in the air from Harrigan we've got the last tackle with us Lyons runs to the 20 to the inside Hancock outside he's meant for the kick Tuve Tuve up on the inside Got right under their guard, the little fellow, and he puts it down for a try. Once again, the genies have put lines in the sevens football. He's put one on here for Jeff Toovey. He throws a dummy back inside that held him up just a fraction. And then Toovey, he did look offside. Now he looked offside because he was. Exactly. <laughs> only, only two metres. Well, they've done well, Fiji, to, to hold on that long. But Jeff Toovey, I actually think he ran between the legs of a couple of Fijians to get there. Matthew Ridge... What an easy conversion attempt in the first set of six. They put four points on the board. Now the try came after one and three quarter minutes, eight minutes now, unexpired time in the first half. Steve Roach on the sideline. Yeah, well, the Fijians excited about being in the final. They're, they've been told by their coach to play the football that everyone expects. As you said, they are the crowd favourites, everyone up. Don't be overawed by the, by the occasion. Manly, they think that they've got more petrol than the Fijians. They've already played in three trial matches. The big thing from Bobby Fulton is to make sure you finish off the tackles. Lock, any idea how healthy both teams are? Any injuries at all? Yeah, there are a couple of niggling injuries uh, from both sides, as you expect after three days of football. But, you know, they're all fit and they're all taking the field. Now, running across to the left was Nekakalu, and coming back on the inside is Dakwatonga, I think. In fact, it was Nalangi Langi, the other Penrith player, one of three. And now here's Kubawai taking the defence on, took two in with him, and now they've spread the ball through Kadroka. He turns it up, it's with Saru. Saru on an arc like run looking for a hole to present itself. It's not there. No, Nayakakalu is with it. Back and across for Koravata. Koravata goes across the park looking for an inside oh. runner. Oh, Jeff Tooby. Jeff Tooby stands tall. <laughs> he plows him into the ground. Still the Fijians with one left. What will they do on their last tackle? They spread the ball to the centre. And now across. It's intercepted by Craig Hancock. This will be an end.